attention to the social media news. And, and, uh, but that is not all. I mean, one of the interesting thing is the sort of, you know, uh, production of a lot of aesthetic, symbolic objects during the demonstration, for example. Um, so there is a lot of uh, detail work, ethnographic work, and also, uh, is, you know, uh, on the ground cultural performances and practices that should that could be investigated uh, richly, so to speak. But at the sort of individual level, and I think also that is fairly important at the level of individual you, the structure of it, our feeling right now, the kind of precariousness that they carry with them uh, around the whole time. And this is actually, uh, again, I mean, it's an area where you begin to see uh, manifestation in cultural practices. The Recently, one of our colleagues uh, on the journal, Andy Wang, had written something when, you know, her, his own explanation of the, uh, uh, of the sunflower movement is quite interesting because a lot of the older civil society activists complained about how these young demonstrators are unorganized uh, and not interested in power, so what are they doing? and absolutely don't understand you know, uh, uh, the kind of motivation behind the demonstrations because the old activists tend to think in long term, tend to think in terms of replacing the state, tend to think in terms of you know, uh, occupying power structures to do things. Whereas in the current context, that doesn't seem to be the case. So in defense of, so I mean, and the young who protested are very conscious of the fact that they don't have uh, fixed goals and that they are not, you know, uh, going to achieve, you know, a revolution. But what they, what at least suggestion is very interesting, and you see this in Taiwan mass uh, pop culture production, is that because the future is so unthinkable, and the terms, you know, because the future is so unthinkable, in, 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 in Taiwan, so bogged down with, you know, time, you know, with the sort of two party unifications and, uh, and, and uh, independence uh, struggle. If you watch Taiwan TV, it's at nausea, it's just screaming at each other across the aisle. Uh, so they, it's so unthinkable that they've developed this idea of. Uh, holding on to little assured pleasures. Just existentially, this is what we have, you know, uh, even if it's just hanging out at cafes, that's what we're gonna do. I mean, and, and uh, but you know, so in the same sense, it's kind of big, little big, it's always about these little victories, and then after that, just disappear as quickly as they, as they march. And you actually see this quite, I mean, so, so, so the kind of existential, immediate existential uh, interest is replacing uh, what we conventionally understand as civil society politics. Now, how do we work with this? I mean, how, you know, uh, what is, if there's no long, if the interest is not in long term, we need a whole new conceptual uh, framework to understand this. And you see this in uh, Taiwan movies a lot. I mean, in the last five or six years, the really popular Taiwan movies are almost always very small stories of romance uh, between uh, late high school and the transition period between high school and university years. Uh, they are, you know, they they were together as schoolmates and about to go their own ways, and the kind of sentiments that built around there, and it's extremely popular. And it's, I mean, so this this notion of the of the small and, and personal and highly personal has become uh, a a formula and, and to a certain extent a metaphor of the current condition. Uh, and 
There is even suggestion that uh, there are Hong Kong people who are so tired of Hong Kong politics and seeing no future, they are going to Taiwan uh, to sort of at least live this small life, uh, at least 